What is the Archbishop of Canterbury? The Anglican Communion, the association of 38 Anglican churches with 85 million faithful throughout 165 countries, is symbolically headed by the Archbishop of Canterbury, who has been mistakenly referred to as some as the Anglican Pope. Why a bishop whose see is based from a city of 43,000 people located in East Canton, England holds this position is a bit complicated, but it all goes back to Pope Gregory the Great. In 585, Pope Gregory sent the Benedictine monk Augustine on a mission to establish an organized Christian presence in England to convert the Angles, Saxons, and Utes living there. Christianity had been introduced to Britain during the Roman occupation. By the late 4th century, the Celts, who had populated Britain at the time, had been nominally converted. However, by the 6th century, the Celts had been displaced to Wales and Cornwall by these Germanic tribes. In 597, Augustine landed in Kent and established his Episcopal See at Canterbury, which was the capital of Abelbert's Kingdom of Kent. Throughout the years, Augustine and his successors had more Episcopal sees established throughout England, with the Bishop at Canterbury being the Metropolitan or Senior Bishop to the other bishops throughout England. Eventually, a second Metropolitical See for bishops in the north of England was created at York. Together, these two Metropolitan Archbishops held the titles of Primate of All England and Primate of England. The Archbishop's duties today are extensive. He is the Ordinary, that is the person with jurisdiction over the Diocese of Canterbury. He is also the Metropolitan of the Province of Canterbury, consisting of 30 dioceses in South and Central England. He is also the Chair of the General Synod of the Church of England, which he co-chairs with the Archbishop of York. He is also a member of the Privy Council, an advisory body to the British monarch. Thus, as an Archbishop and Privy Councillor appointed by the Crown, he is titled His Grace, the Most Reverend and Right Honourable, the Lord Archbishop of Canterbury. But that doesn't answer why he, a bishop for a small city in England, is the spiritual head of the world's approximately 85 million faithful in the Anglican Communion. Well, as the British conquered and established their empire, the Anglican faith spread as well, primarily amongst colonists, but also converts as well. Most of these Anglicans were under the authority of the Church of England, but the Episcopalians in the United States became autonomous after the American Revolution and were nominally in communion with the Anglicans of the British Empire. In 1867, the Dominion of Canada was created and the Canadian bishops became worried about a loss of communion with their fellow Anglicans. A pan-Anglican conference was called that met at Lambeth Palace, the London residence of the Archbishop of Canterbury, who presided over this conference. This eventually led for a formalized creation of the Anglican Communion. The Archbishop of Canterbury, being primate of the Church of England, the mother church of Anglicanism, became the primus inter pares, or first amongst equals, of all the bishops in the Anglican Communion. At the same time, being in communion with him and the See of Canterbury is considered a requisite for being part of the Anglican Communion. However, the authority that the Archbishop of Canterbury has in the Anglican Communion as a whole and Anglicans outside England is extremely limited. He does have what is called extra-provincial authority to act as metropolitan to the Anglican churches in Spain, Portugal, Sri Lanka, and Bermuda as the churches there operate as a single diocese. However, that authority itself is limited. He does have authority over the Anglican Communion office, but that only plays a support and organization role between the member churches. But he does preside over the Lambeth Conferences and has the power over which bishops get invited, but he has no control over the bishops while they are there. So, unlike the Pope, who has quite a lot of authority over the Roman Catholic Church, its bishops, and its faithful throughout the world, the Archbishop of Canterbury's authority pales in comparison and is largely symbolic. Although, getting to sit right behind the Queen as she opens the Summer Olympics, having the occasional chit-chat with her, and performing the occasional royal wedding might make up for that.